Welcome to... On tonight's Clubhouse Live, Aaron Jones welcomes defensive lineman Montrevious Adams. The Packers whipped the Raiders at Lambeau. We'll look back on Sunday's big win and more with the guys. Plus, we have another fun Clubhouse Live challenge coming up. Hint, it sucks. It's time to get started, so let's open the door. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the Clubhouse Sports Pub and Grill here inside the Red Lion Hotel, Paper Valley. We're in downtown Appleton, Wisconsin. I'm Brett Christofferson with USA Today Network Wisconsin, and nobody's even paying attention to me. They're all looking at the stars of the show over there. Look at me for a minute, would you please? How's everybody doing tonight? Come on, let's hear you. I would think uh, you guys would be in a pretty good mood. And, uh, but first things first, I always want to make sure that uh, we give a shout out to our door openers tonight. So give it up to uh, Jacob and Carson, uh, the guys making sure the big guys got in. Thank you, fellas. We appreciate it. And uh, easily the worst part of the show, but I got to do it. It's when I have to introduce the other uh, member of our crew, and they're already booing. It is Chicago yes. Bears fan, Ricardo Arguello, everybody. Yes, how is everyone doing? That's how are you doing, Ricardo? I'm, hey. It's tough right now, I'm telling you right now. Yeah. Brett, you explained that my team is 3-3 three and three and my Cardinals got swept. Yes, well, let me, let me say this. <laughs> NLCS. I'll, let me just say this. October 20th, uh, 2019 is the date that we will... <laughs> bury the Chicago Bears no. 2019 season, right? It's no. over. It's over. Forget it. Sinking like the Titanic, Plenty as I said last games week. Left. Hurry up. Do your Bears minute, would you? Yes. I know you want to well, say. They're at a crossroads right now. Three and three. They're just making things a little more difficult, Brett, to come back. 11 games left. Whoa. To Whoa. Whoa. Hold on. We have technical difficulties. Well, you gave me 10 So I seconds. guess we can't continue on with the Bears minute. So, uh... How about we talk about this instead? Uh, yes. Packers 42, Raiders 24. <laughs> mean Gene loves it. Ricardo, did you notice there's no technical difficulties when I say that? Yes, I know. That's very peculiar. Yes, the Packers rolled up 481 yards, scored touchdowns on four straight offensive possessions at one point, including TDs to close the first half and to open the second half in dismantling the Raiders and improving to 6-1 and one on the season. How about the old man, Aaron Rodgers? <laughs> Statistically perfect, right? With a 158.3 passer rating, five touchdown passes, 429 passing yards. He also rushed for a score and hooked up with eight different receivers. How about Aaron Jones finding the end zone again? A fantastic 21-yard TD reception. I think I predicted you were going to get in the end zone through the air, uh, Aaron, uh, and uh, accounted for 83 total yards. How about MVS with a big day? Marquez Valdez-Scantling, 133 yards on just two receptions, including a 74-yard fourth-quarter score that iced the game. And the defense came through with some big red zone stops. So the Packers hit the road for a big Sunday night matchup against uh, the Kansas City Chiefs. Ricardo, a new look. Kansas City Chiefs. Rodgers, by the way, is now just one of nine quarterbacks in NFL history with at least 350 career touchdowns. How about that? Hey, Happy Vince likes it. Happy Vince, Ricardo, has become his own celebrity. Have you noticed that? Everybody gets loves a lot Happy of love. Vince. And you know why he's happy? Because our co-host is sitting right there. It's Green Bay Packers running back Aaron Jones. He's right there. Showtime. He's hanging out with one of our door openers. And check out who's hanging out with uh, Aaron tonight. It is Packers defensive lineman. He's back, a friend of the show. Montrevious Adams, he's right there. All right, first, a big thank you to our presenting sponsors, Superior Discount Liquors, a full-service full liquor store with the area's largest selection of liquor, wine, and beer. They also take special orders on hard-to-find items with locations in Green Bay, Manitowoc, and Sheboygan. Stop in today. And a Potawatomi Hotel and Casino. Check out Wednesday Night Wins this fall at Potawatomi. 
Play with your club card now through November 13th for your share of $250,000 in total prizes. More at paysbig.com slash fall wins. Ricardo. Yes. Get busy. This is an interactive show, everyone, so we all know that. We invite your comments and questions through our live chat, which can be found online next to our video viewer. Jen Zettel Van Houten is here monitoring the chat, and we'll relay your comments and questions to us. Jen's back, then Sammy, then Jen, then Sammy. Nobody wants to be with you. Yeah. <laughs> and you admit it, too. I admit it. You are finally coming to your senses. Facebook.com slash Clubhouse Live. Give us a like. Give me a follow on Twitter. Please, would you do so? At PC Bretzi, at PC Ricardo, at Jen Vanden Houten. Aaron is at Showtime, T-Y-M-E underscore 33. And Montrevious, I think I'm getting it right, at Montrevious 1-T-G-E. Do I have it right? He says I have it right, so I've got it right. So uh, give him a follow as well. Hey, I'm back to the Vikings welcome mat. Somebody was asking me why we put the Vikings welcome mat on the stage. It's because we hate the Vikings. And I want the guys to stomp their feet all over it, wipe their feet a little bit, dirty it up. Well, what clearly is uh, now the ugliest logo because they're kind of hot, so we need to give them some bad karma, right? All right, our co-host is in his third NFL season all with the Green Bay Packers. He's a stout pass protector, right? Did you see him blitz yeah. pick up and blocking and all that? Yeah. He makes fantastic adjustments to come up with spectacular touchdown receptions, right? Yeah. yeah. He makes key blocks to help trigger long touchdown receptions. He's tied for the NFL lead in uh, total touchdowns because, well, he's showtime, isn't he, right? Get on your feet as we welcome to the stage Green Bay Packers running back number 33, Aaron Showtime Jones. That? Oh, I know what you like. I like the double high five. I like that. I think that's our thing now. That's our thing. Aaron Jones. Showtime. There's no 100-yard hugs, Kurt. Settle down over there. Hey, uh, uh, first things first, a uh, programming note. Again, uh, next Monday, and remember this, it's our Halloween show, right? So come dressed in your best costume top. Costumes win prizes. A masked mystery guest will be joining you. We will not announce that ahead of time, but again, you need to let me know that ahead of time because my script is everything to me. It is my everything. So if you got a costume, wear it. Ricardo and I are going to wear costumes and uh, everybody. So maybe your dad can bring a costume too. I don't know if he's going to be here. That'd be No, he fun. won't be here. He won't be here. Shoot. Another thing, uh, we got a lot to get to, and it's uh, uh, look at this. What do you think of this place, first of all, Aaron? Look at this. Look at this place. I love it. I love it. Thank you guys for your support. They love being here. They love spending some time with you. Hopefully, you love being here in return, right? You love these I, guys. I do. I see a lot of uh, the shirts, the logos, so thank you for that as well. Yes, sir. Th 33 jerseys. I you love got it. a UTEP uh, sweatshirt UTEP, right here. UTEP. Right in I front of me it. here. Thank you. Before we get to going, there is a uh, couple back there from the El Paso area, if I'm not mistaken, and they would like to present you or donate something to you for the show uh, well, go ahead and show it off, uh, if you don't mind. Stand up. I would pronounce your name, but I know I'm going to say it wrong. There we go. From El Paso. And they are donating this beautiful Aaron Jones banner to Clubhouse oh, Live. Look wow. at that. Thank you. That's great. We have to find a place to set that up here at Clubhouse Live. All the way from El Paso, 915, right, uh, Aaron? Yes, sir, 915. All right, so uh, also from Idaho, am I saying am I correct, uh, Bob? We have John and Kim right here at this table from Idaho. Welcome. They're here. We have somebody from England is here tonight, right over here from England. They flew in just for the show. We've got California right here. I mean, it's a, it's a sensation right now. We got El Paso right here. We got well. El Paso right here. Yeah. Well, I'm not sure what. We, we've got Freedom, Wisconsin. How about any Wisconsinites here? There we go. And that's the show. We're all done. We ran out of time. Oh, you're having fun, aren't you? Isn't this fun? I am. It's a lot of fun. Yes, except the only thing that's not fun is Ricardo. He kind of ruins oh, everything. I'm lots of fun, oh, man. Yeah. No. Lots of fun. Thank no. you, Aaron, by the way, because I, I disagree, Ricardo. You're, you're on my fantasy team. Thank you for the touchdown, my friend. Oh, you're welcome. You're welcome. 
<laughs> you have anything? He's feeling a little down. His bears oh, are no, slumping. I'm not they're they're kind of slipping. Do you have any words of encouragement yes. for him? Yes, give me some words of encouragement. Um, I just hope your your fantasy team is doing better. You're starting the right <laughs> people in that. That's the they only are, advice yes. I could give you. <laughs> yes. yes, I'm in first place there at least. Yes. <laughs> Well, how fun was Sunday afternoon at Lambeau Field? It's a fall, beautiful day, sunshine, blue skies, and you're just kicking the butt out of an opponent. How, how much of a blast was that? It's a lot of fun. I mean, uh, when you're clicking on all cylinders, uh, you go out and you score when you need to score. Um, your defense has some big goal line stands. Um, everything's going the right way. It's going to be a lot of fun out there. You know what else is uh, fun is uh, you've already equaled last year's win total. Last year you were six, nine, and one. You're six and one already this season, right? <laughs> First place in the NFC North. <laughs> Blake Martinez, he tweeted after the game that it's the most fun he has ever, ever had on a team. So what's it like out there? I mean, what's it like in the locker room? I mean, everybody wants to come to work, don't they? Yeah, it is, and that's crazy. Usually people don't want to come to work, so. <laughs> oh, um, yeah. No, it's, it's a lot of fun. It's a, we're a band of brothers. I mean, um, you see the defense, they uh, did their, um, what is it, remember the Titans last uh, yesterday? And oh, yeah. if you were to look to the, to the sideline, the offensive players was doing it as well. So it's just one big family. We're all happy for each other. We feed off each other's energy, and we all want to see each other succeed. So the first two seasons for you, it was sub-500 for the team. Now, what's, what's the difference? You know, it's year three for you. What do you see? As you, I mean, there's a noticeable difference. What, can you pin it on one thing? Is it simply just the coaching change? Is, th is the free agent acquisitions? What's going on there right now? Uh, I would say it's a little bit of everything. Um, with the free agent acquisitions, you do get some leaders that come in. Um, it's just a whole different chemistry uh, when you get different guys in there. Um, new coach and staff, they bring a a whole new energy as well. So I feel like it's just a little bit of everything and guys all have that same common goal. We all want we all want to win the Super Bowl at the end of the day. So Mean Gene, you love that, don't you Mean Gene? <laughs> he can barely stand it, Showtime. He can barely stand it right now. Well, Aaron Rodgers said he loves the vibe of the team, the chemistry, but uh, 481 total yards behind a game plan that really looked to attack the Raiders' pass defense, right? So you're really taken to the air, but was it as easy as it looked? I mean, it looked like it was just pitch and catch going on out there, but it, it's never that easy. But uh, just talk about just that offensive performance yesterday. Um, yeah, it's, like you said, it's never that easy. But, um, I mean, when you execute in your game plan, um, you, you see the looks that you practice. It is a little easier. Um, the game should be a little bit easier than practice. Uh, you're s you practice those looks all week, so you know what to expect when it comes out there. The guys are just going a little bit more full speed than – the guys you're going against in practice, but um, it was it was a lot of fun. It, I mean, when you're out there balling, everybody's making plays. It's it's fun. Yeah, did you hear that, John Gruden? It was a little easy uh, against the Raiders. You know he's a big fan of the show, Ricardo. You know he's got that Chucky look on his face right now. He he's not a happy he always man. Look, he always looks pink. He always looks angry out yes. there, doesn't he? So, so you've won kind of in multiple ways, haven't you? Especially offensively lately. You, you've run the ball. We saw that against the the Cowboys. Now you you, you took to the air, and everybody's contributing. So I guess what's the identity? What's the identity of you guys as an offense right now? What, what, what is it? Uh, I'm, I mean. Whoa, easy. Whoa. Easy. What she said. I can't say that, but what she said. This is a family <laughs> show. <laughs> family show here. Rosie, can you bleep, bleep that out, please, for us, please? The identity. Um, I mean, I feel like we can be whatever we need to be. If we need to run the ball, we can run the ball. If we need to pass the ball, we can pass the ball. So, um, just not one side it would stand balanced and that's what we're going to be you know i've seen adjectives out there after yesterday's game uh, like the word scary the word terrifying uh, in describing the potential of your offense uh and what you did against the raiders so what one word would you describe what is still to come because uh, you're not all the way there yet are you i would definitely say scary um you add 17 back in that mix and um that's a special weapon uh top Number one receiver in the league, if you ask me. So um, that's definitely scary for any team. But there is still more to come with this offense, I feel. I don't feel like you have quite arrived yet, correct? I mean, you're still learning stuff. Oh, yeah, it's a, it's a lot more to uh, go. I mean, still making mistakes out there. Um, a lot we can clean up, but uh, we're going to continue to get better, like I said, and uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. A lot of fun. Well, you know what was fun was your sensational 21-yard touchdown catch, wasn't that? <laughs> Packers' first touchdown of the game. So you're looking over your right shoulder, and you're spinning, and you're doing all this fancy stuff.
stuff out there and you're trying to add drama to the catch, right? As uh, Aaron Rodgers really drops a dime right into your right in the bread basket. There you are celebrating your touchdown on the monitor. Good look at you. Then you go into your little airplane mode. You decide not to do the Lambo leap and all this stuff. But uh, did you did you have it all the way? Did you know it was yours all the way, or was there one point because you're kind of turning right at about the goal line? You're, you're making the adjustment. Are you like, oh, <laughs> I, I, this isn't quite where I want the ball to be? Uh, well, it wasn't wh where I wanted the ball, but uh, I just knew if I made that adjustment, um, I, the ball would be right there where I wanted it to be. So, uh, turn my head, and A. Rod did a great job of placing it on me, and was able to catch it easily. So why no Lambo leap? What was up with the airplane celebration? Uh, it's something we we all mess around with um, in the meeting room. Uh, our offensive line coach tells us all to celebrate with the O line and get all, all okay. them involved. So um, usually they don't they're on field goals, so they don't run all the way down. So you try to get all of them involved, but. I mean, Corey was the only old lineman. Well, no, Corey and um, Elton Jenkins. He, you always see him run down. He's the first one. So whenever there's a touchdown, look for 74. He's gonna be the first offensive lineman in the in the end zone. He wants a Lambo leap sometime too, doesn't he? But uh, definitely Rod does. <laughs> Aaron Rodgers said after the game that you told him that you owed him one after uh, the previous week. So, but he said you guys are now even. So there you go. Your quarterback is feeling pretty good about stuff. So, what's it like scoring a touchdown? It's a lot of fun. I mean, I told you, I told you that's my home. That's, that's where I chill at. That's my that's, home. That's your home on Sundays, and this is his home on Mondays, right? Right here. <laughs> right here. <laughs> and then what did you guys think? Just as impressive as the touchdown, how about the big block uh, that set up yeah. MVS's 74-yard score? There you are. You saw him catch the ball. The play was designed to him, I'm assuming. He was the first read. You're, you're, you're trying to clear out uh, your defender, so he's got all that space. And, and then what are you doing? It's all technique, right? You're getting those hands inside, and you're engaging, and you're extending, and there's no way he's going to make a tackle on that play. No way. Uh, even if I wouldn't have got that block, I think Quez would have still scored with his speed. But um, it's the little things. Uh, those guys are out there fighting for me every down, blocking on the perimeter. So when I have the chance to return the favor, I'm going to do that. And it just happened that way, and he was able to score. You know, look picture perfect, uh, that, that technique, uh, when you watch the replay. So how aware are, are you of the technique within the play itself? Are you thinking, I got to do this, 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 or are you just uh, all reacting at that point? Well, I know if he catches it, uh, there's not much, um, not much room where he can go. He's going to have to run up the sideline. And um, where we're at, the guy's going to usually fall off. That The DB who's covering me is usually going to fall off. So um, I, I know if I can get my hands on him, he's usually no good. I mean, I'm blocked for a living. So... Yes. He's not, it, it's going to be easy after that. And um, it's smaller, it's a safety, it's not a linebacker. So th that also makes it easier. Yes. And then uh, speaking of blocking, did you see the blitz pickup on the beautiful pass from Rodgers to Danny Vitale, the fullback? That guy looks like a character. Number 45. But uh, Aaron, I thought that was supposed to be maybe not a strong suit of your game, but you're doing just fine and stoning these uh, safety blitzes, these, these guys coming in. It's a piece of cake. See, you, you reading the tabloids and all of that. You sure. gotta, I don't believe you gotta, the tabloids. You can't, you, can't, you can't listen to that. You've you got you to gotta block believe, out the negative. Uh, yeah, well, I'll look who I have to work with every day. <laughs> it's, uh, it's, 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 not, it's pretty easy to be negative. I believe in you, but, uh, but that's something you, you have worked hard in your game, though, right? I mean, you, you're, you're doing a fantastic job in pass pro. Definitely. It's something I worked on. I mean, um, in this league, you, you want to be a complete back. And um, so anything you can do to take your game to the next level, that's what you got to work on, and that's something I – uh, been working on ever since I was a rookie. Two more things, and then it's uh, first audience question time with Ricardo. But eight different guys caught passes yesterday. Five different guys caught touchdowns, and six different guys had catches of at least 21 yards. That's amazing. So what is this offense going to be like when 17 gets back in there? When you have a, this type of offensive balance already, and now you add one of the top receivers in the game to it. Scary. <laughs> I mean, like I said, scary. You don't know who's going to get the ball. You don't know where the ball is going. You see somebody coming in motion, fly sweep, you don't know if they're gonna get the ball, fake it that way, throw it the other way. You, s you see it used all the time. Uh, people get touchdowns, running free, downfield. Um, so, I mean, when you have six, uh, you just said six guys score touchdowns. Five guys five, score touchdowns, five. six guys with 21 yards or more. I mean, those are, si that's 20 yards or more, those are big plays. Yeah. So, you just, you can't scheme up one guy. You, you, you can't plan for one guy if uh, you have five, six guys doing it. And the scary thing, too, is the, the, the formations, you're doing different things with the same look. You don't know what's coming. It's amazing. Finally, you're a running back, obviously. So give me and give us your best critique 
of Aaron Rodgers' three-yard touchdown run. Uh, all suddenly, he's a running back. How did he look out there? How did the 35-year-old look as a running back? 10 out of 10, five-star. There we go. Perfect score again. And, R Ricardo, you just can't stand it, can you? No, I can stand it. Well, you know what? What you can stand is you talking to our first yes. audience question. Here. Yes, we have, uh, this is Kim from Idaho Falls, Idaho. Yeah. She, she, has, yes. she has many colorful metaphors yes, uh, that you does. heard earlier today. Uh, but yes, your question for Aaron, Kim, go ahead. What is it truly like to be hit hard and to hit hard? What's, yeah, the collisions of the NFL game? Uh, mini car crash is what it feels like. <laughs> um, um, I mean, it's not fun, but uh, I try to avoid the big shots. I, don't, I feel like I don't take a lot of them. Um, and then sometimes running the ball, you got to be the aggressor. You got to put your head down and go get those two yards for the first down. And um, you, know, you know what it's going to feel like, so just buckle your chin strap and get ready. Yeah, good job. <laughs> That's what playing football is all about, right? That's why he's there, Ricardo, and that's why I'm safe and sound up yeah. here. Can I, I ask? Don't, I don't want to feel like a mini car crash. Can I add there. something to that? Yeah, I, I remember 2020 did a thing on NFL running backs and how it hard feels to be hit. They said it's like putting shoulder pads on and running into a garage 20 times full speed mm. is what it's like because that's basically what you do is you're running into grown men who are brick walls. Brick walls, yes, exactly. <laughs> amazing. So, so amazing. Look like him. Yeah, like my <laughs> Travis over there. <laughs> All right, let's take a time out. Let's do tonight's stat pack. Uh, let's talk a little bit more about Aaron Rodgers. Hard to believe, uh, but produced the first perfect 158.3 passer rating in franchise history. Amazing. I was surprised when I heard that. I would have thought he would have had one or two, but uh, he now owns three of the top five single game passer rating marks in team annals. His previous best of 155.4 set against the Browns in 09 was the mark. Now ranked second and his 154.9 rating against Carolina in 2014 ranks fourth. Brett Favre is third with 154.9. Lynn Dickey fifth, 152.1. So Aaron Rodgers keeps doing, I guess he's, I guess he's still elite, huh? He's going to keep being elite. Yeah. <laughs> that's no, talk about a crazy narrative. That's another crazy narrative right there. Ricardo, we're doing uh, trivia tonight. Yeah, and we have a couple of rules, so here we go. First off, we will ask the question. If you think you know the answer, you got to raise your hand. Please don't shout it out. And if you're correct, you win what, Brett and Aaron? A day with Aaron Jones. No, Whoa, no, nice. no, no, no. Pizza and beer at the clubhouse <laughs> is what the prize is. <laughs> All right, there you go. And once you win, you're out for the rest of the show. Sorry, live chatters, you have to be here to win. But Jen Settle, she's here handling our online trivia contest. I'm asking the first one. Here we go. The fabled Vince Lombardi, his final game as the Packers head coach, came against the Raiders in Super Bowl II. Which two players carried Lombardi off the field Ooh. after Green Bay's 33-14 victory? Good question. Right here. And which two players? Two guys. Two, two guys. Oh, you got it. Nope, but no, but he did come in. Forrest Gregg, Jerry Kramer. There we go. Almost. You're on the offensive line. That, that Vince Lombardi? Nope, that's a different uh, time he was carried off the field. Uh, that might have been the He was carried off the field a lot. He was, well, that's, <laughs> especially when they beat the Bears, uh, Ricardo. Well, I don't know if he was Jerry carried Kramer, off the field. Jerry Kramer, Forrest Gregg. <laughs> Kramer, right, a friend of the show. He's been on the show a couple of times, leading the famed Packers sweep right up there. All right, let's get your uh, guest onto the stage. He's a big boy. Should we do it? We should. All right, hold on, Montrevious. Our guest tonight is also... In his third NFL season, all with the Packers, he was selected by the Packers in the third round of the 2017 NFL Draft. He has appeared so far in five games this season, has nine tackles, a pass breakup, and a quarterback pressure. Our guest tonight saw action in all 16 games last season, finishing with 26 tackles, one and a half sacks, six tackles for a loss, a forced fumble, and three quarterback pressures. Our guest tonight played collegiately at Auburn, where he... Uh, appeared in 52 career games and earned first-team All-SEC honors after a senior season in which he tallied 44 tackles, 8.5 tackles for a loss, 4.5 sacks, a forced fumble, two fumble recoveries, including one forced score, and an interception. How about that senior year? I need to catch my breath. Not quite done yet. Our guest tonight loves a good Pop-Tart. Did you know that, Ricardo? He loves Pop-Tarts. He was a fan of Reggie Bush growing up. He's a huge fan of the movie Friday Night Lights. He is the proud father of two young boys, and he shares something with me. Yes, he does. What? Give it up for Green Bay Packers defensive lineman, number 90, Montrevious Adams. <laughs> Where's my 
my drink. I need a drink after that long intro. I'm you very need, you need a drink, Brett? I need a stiff drink right now. All right. Before we get going, because this is Aaron's show and you're Aaron's guest, Aaron, as always, asks the first question. All right, my question would be, what's the, what's the biggest challenge uh, playing D-line? Like, a lot of people don't see what goes down in those trenches. Uh, I probably would say the biggest challenge is just um, the pre-snap recognitions. Because, I mean, I feel like if you can see a lot of that stuff before it happens, then it eliminates the bad problems that could happen. Oh, you're okay. You're all done? Okay, there we go. There we go. That's what it's like to be on the defensive line. So I'm going to make a friend for life again, and I'm going to say to you, Montrevious, War Eagle, right? War Eagle. War Eagle. We're buddies now. We're pals. We should do something together. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Don't say that so you're not sure or anything. I'm not that bad of a guy. Hey, it depends on what y'all are doing, I'm pretty we're sure. We're just going to hang out, stare at the leaves, changing colors, take a nice long stroll in a yeah, park. Yeah, I, I, like I answer that for him. That's a no. No, that's a no? <laughs> that's a no. <laughs> We'll play Nerf football in the backyard. How about that? That's, That's a, a go. Better. That's a go. There we go. Just, go. just you can't touch me. You're not allowed to touch me. <laughs> Auburn stopped uh, Arkansas on Saturday, ranked ninth, only lost to Clemson. How does a Georgia kid end up in Auburn, Alabama? How do you get up here? You're supposed to stay in the – you're supposed to be a bulldog, aren't you? Well, I mean, honestly, I just, I just kind of wanted to leave the state. I just wanted to leave home a little bit. And um, Auburn was the perfect place for me. I mean, it just – the family feel, like, a lot of people talk about it, but, like, the family feel there is, like, real, and that's just something uh, I'm super big on, and that's family. And that's the best thing for me. I enjoyed my four years there, and still go there from, I'll be there in a few weeks, actually, to watch the Georgia game. There you go. Probably your bye week, I suppose, huh? Yeah, that's coming up. <laughs> Auburn, Georgia, SEC. You played a national championship, right, at Auburn? Wasn't it against Florida State? That's what I have uh, down here. And freshman, freshman year. Freshman year, the national freshman championship. Year. And then uh, you also uh, took on the Badgers in a bowl game I have here, but the Badgers won that game, Montrevious. Yeah, Wisconsin yeah. coming on top again, <laughs> except Ooh. for Saturday. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was a rough uh, rough season, a rough game for... Uh, for Lovey Martin. Smith Ooh, strikes again. Yes, the former Bear beats it. Was, hey, listen. You and I have this in common. You and I share the same July 24th birth date. You and I are like like brothers. What? Yes. Brothers. He was born July 24th. I was born on July 24th. So was Jerry over there. He has a July 24th hey, Jerry. birthday. <laughs> we have another July 24th birthday. Hey. Yes! July 24th! Yeah, but when when was Montre when were you born, Del Monte? What year was that? Ninety five. Ninety five. Brett, what was yours? <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't matter when okay. I was born. <laughs> I still more like father and son. Uh, but easy right. now. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, my son was born two months after my yeah, trade, exactly. my oldest was. So yeah. But I'm I'm boyishly good looking, don't you think, Ricardo? <laughs> oh, no comment. Okay. Man. I ain't seen <laughs> Let's get on to this uh, the, the show. So 6'4", 304 pounds, right? But you lettered twice in tennis what? while in high school. Tennis? So I'm wondering, how much did tennis contribute to your football, right? There's agility, there's footwork, you got to slide back and forth? Yeah, I mean, really, uh, back at home where I'm from, I just wanted to stay active. And uh, for me, tennis was like more of a change of direction, hand-eye coordination type thing. And then it just happened to be something I was good at. Could you imagine him crushing the serves? Yeah. <laughs> just let's rocket play, balls. Let's play tomorrow. Rocket balls. You don't want to play me. I bet you you went up to the net. You were just <laughs> you were just swinging as hard as you could, and there's probably uh, <laughs> implanted tennis balls in your opponent's guts and chest. <laughs> hey, what? But, but, how about this? I'll ask both of you guys the importance of being multi-sport athletes. So in high school, uh, Montrevis, you played basketball, baseball, and ran track at Dooley County High. Aaron, you played basketball and ran track at Burgess High in El Paso. So. You know, you see, you see so much uh, spe specialization nowadays, but here's living proof. These guys are professional athletes, and I bet you you both say playing multi-sports in high school was a big factor in where you are today. Uh, definitely. Um, like you said, I played football, basketball, and ran track. Um, I feel like you use different muscles in different sports, and um, 
sometimes when your body gets put in a certain position, it, it's familiar with using those muscles because you've played different sports. And I just feel like it makes you a better all-around athlete um, and competitor at the end of the day. How about you, my Travis? Multi-sports, right? <clears throat> yeah, I mean, just to add on to what he was saying, I just feel like it prepares you a little bit for the real world and just the aspects of, like, the game, winning and losing, you know, anything can happen. You know, we're going to have our game plan. They're going to have their game plan. But at the end of the day, somebody got to lose, but we still got to come back to work the next day and do what we do. There we go. Do it. Multi-sports. Stop specializing. So let's talk a little bit about the game, a little bit about football, but I'll ask both of you guys this too. So Aaron Rodgers, of course, brilliant, right? Sensational game. Can you guys, within the course of a game like yesterday, while you're playing in the game, understand what's going on and what he's doing and what you're seeing? Can you relish it, Montrevis? Can you think wow as you're watching it? I mean, honestly, me, I just like to watch him at practice. Okay. <laughs> because, I mean, when you watch him at practice, you can tell how somebody's going to play in the game. And, like, just to see, like, him every day in and out, like, it's amazing. So, like, I don't even really have to watch it in the game because, I mean, that's what he practices. You see, the guy plays the way he practices. How about you, Aaron? Can You're on the offensive side, so you're busy. But, man, there's got to be some moments where you're like, whoa. Oh, definitely. Uh, just some of the throws he makes. Um, I mean, you don't know. You know, at some point, like, you know how many touchdowns he has throughout the game, but you don't know how many yards, and you're not keeping track of that. So, um, but it, once the game's over and you sit there and realize what he did, you're like, wow, like that was definitely special. I mean, you could see it going on during the game. You don't see too many incomplete, cl incompleted passes and things like yeah. that. Even that catch you made. I mean, as, as great as your catch was, that was just a thread the needle type throw oh yeah, between defenders. The ball was on the money. I was turned and it was right there. <laughs> <laughs> right there, catch right it, there. right? <laughs> Score a touchdown. So, yeah. all right, Montrevis, a uh, story came out uh, during training camp about how Mike Pettin and uh, Jerry Montgomery kind of challenged you, right? Uh, Last off season, I guess, was that uh, when they kind of challenged you to, uh, I don't know, I guess, what, what, what was the challenge? Because you really took it to heart and you worked out and you had grueling workouts and you lost weight. And I just talked to these folks that don't really know the story about how they pushed you to get better, I guess. Well, you know, to start out, you said I was 304. I'm like, you know, 290, 294. <laughs> there <laughs> you go. <laughs> but now, I, um, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Um, really, I mean, it's just. For me, I'm a competitive person. I mean, and uh, anytime I, I don't really take like criticism, I don't really take it uh, destructive. I just take it all constructive, and um, I just took it as a challenge for me to get better. I mean, and so I came back and did the things that they wanted us to do. Listen to our coaches, listen to the veterans, listen to the young guys. Because I mean. At the end of the day, you can learn from, from anybody. So um, I just wanted to take it all in and just now just keep stacking games and keep, keep getting better and stay healthy. How do you feel? I mean, you lose losing 10 pounds, right? You feel quicker or more agility, I just feel faster? Great. My, knees, my knees feel great. Yeah, <laughs> I bet. <laughs> and then it was not just the cardio, but uh, you, I mean, all the conditioning, but you're, you're diving into the playbook and all that stuff. I mean, you hit it hard and you're ready to go for year three. Ready it's just the go. growth of a professional athlete, right? That's it. That's it. Well, speaking of that, I asked you when you were here last year, going from year one to year two. So, in what way have you progressed and become a better from year two to year three now? Oh, man. Two to three. Two to three, I would say the game has just slowed down because, like, the, the knowledge that I have of the game just from taking time out to study. Uh, and, like I was saying earlier, like, uh, knowing this guard. And the difference between well, like what these every guard does, like what every center does, like it just sets yourself up for success. How about you? The same thing. Year two to year three, has the game slowed down for you too? Uh, it definitely has slowed down, and when it slows down, you're able to play faster. You're able to uh, recognize things before it happens. Uh, like you said, pre-snap, just from studying different things, you can. You're not so worried about getting the plays down, you already have the plays down now. It's the little key details that will elevate your game. So, Aaron, give us a – we always like to ask you this. Give us something we don't know about Montrevious Adams, right? Give us some, some good stuff. What, what, uh, what do we need to know about this big guy here? <laughs> yeah, favorite Outside of Jamal, this is my best friend. Really? Yeah. There we go. 
Very nice. When, when you was saying, uh, when you was asking me earlier, like about watching A Rod, I mean, honestly, like most of the time, if I'm not like listening to our coaches, I'm always watching Aaron. Like, cause like I mean, ever since we came in together, like we just had that bond, and shoot, we've been together ever since. How about that friendship? <laughs> Carter, you and I should try that sometime. Whoa. Maybe we could do up a little chemistry. I don't know how that works with a Bears fan. Yeah. I don't know. Let's, let's wait a little bit. Yeah, let's wait a little bit. Hey, a few more things, and then it's uh, Jen's turn for our social media questions tonight. But uh, I, we kind of uh, touched on, uh, I was going to ask you about Aaron a little bit, but let's talk about some of the, the other guys in the locker room. This is Darius Smith, Preston Smith, Adrian Amos, uh, all these guys. Man, they brought some juice to the uh, – to the defensive side. We asked Kenny Clark this a couple weeks ago, but what do you see from your standpoint? It's 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 different, right? It's it's just I mean, for fun. me, I feel like more than that, they brought knowledge to the game. I mean, the time that I've spent with Z, with Zedarius, I mean, time I spent with Preston, like just learning a little bit of things about the game, like that that means a lot to me. And I mean, like it just helps your game so much so much better. And of course, uh, but it, but it is fun, right? They they have brought an energy that oh, yeah. uh, is just different. I mean, yeah. it's, it, maybe an accountability. Have they brought a, an accountability to everybody? They're the leaders of the defense, are they not? Well, I mean, some they Zedarius try not to say. He's, I mean, they are, but I mean, he always try to say like, you know, everybody do their one eleven. Everybody, everybody's a part, you know. So we don't want to try to make it as like one thing. We could, because we're all together. Do your job, right? Everybody does, your, does their job, and uh, good things happen. If only Ricardo could adhere to that advice sometimes and actually do his job, maybe this show would even be better, Aaron. Uh, a <laughs> couple more things. <laughs> you know, we do have a microphone that's catching all of your chatter, so just be careful. Um, 484 yards you gave up against the Raiders, 155 yards rushing, but you also can't, you, you come through with big stops, big red zone stops. They couldn't score touchdowns. So assess the defense. This has sort of been the, the trend a little bit. Um, how do you like how the defense is playing? Because you're, you're keeping points off the board. And how much more improvement can you see out of the defense when you're hitting the mid midseason mark? I mean, honestly, uh, we've, we've put some good fam out there, but we've off, we've, we have also put some bad. I mean, um, a lot of the things, you know, it just be little mental errors, you know, here and there, just like, you know, everybody. But um, it's something that can be fixed, you know, and that's the good thing with, like, how we, how good we're playing right now and we fix those other little things. The sky's the limit. Sky's the limit for offense and defense, right, everybody? It's, uh, there's still a lot. That's the scary thing, too. There's a long way to go, I think, for these guys yet. It's uh, only seven games into the season. but. I'm going over to Jen. She has our social media question of the night. I do. So Greg Marnaka on Facebook wants to know, what is the worst and best part of traveling for away games? And is there anything you can say that is crazy or fun about your roommates? So <laughs> best and worst part of going to away games and uh, something crazy or fun about your roommate? Uh, the way they feed you on road trips is probably one of the better things. Um, I don't have a roommate. Really? My roommate before uh, the, my first my first two years was Jamal, so uh, he's one of my best friends on the team. So I don't have any problems with him. Um, I guess uh, the disadvantage would be you don't get to sleep in your own bed, but home games you don't get to sleep in your own bed anyway. So <laughs> yeah, you're at a hotel anyway, aren't you? How about my trivia? So you like road trips? Honestly, I don't because I don't really like airplanes. <laughs> 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 That's a problem. That's a problem. Right. I literally live, I'm from Georgia, and that's like 16 hours from here, where I'm from, and I have driven home four times. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Stay off the planes. But uh, it's just something about me. I don't know. I don't really like airplanes, so no, I don't like road trips. So but it's you, fine. It's fine. So it's will fine. you be driving to Kansas City and meeting the team down there or something? Or? I'm going to be on the airplane. <laughs> <laughs> you get on an airplane. Hey, uh, Jen. Uh, yeah, uh, there's some prizes to give uh, there, for the question, There right? are prizes, and then I have a, a follow-up okay, since, cool. since you're on me here. All right, so for having his question selected, Greg wins a signed photo of Aaron Jones. 
Each week, we'll ask you to submit a question for our upcoming guests that we'll ask live during Monday's show. Look for it on Facebook.com slash Clubhouse Live. We've got folks tuning in from 21 states and the District of Columbia tonight. Mm. And this question comes from probably the person who's tuning in from the farthest away. This comes from Kevin in Thailand, which Ooh. is over 8,000 miles away, P.S. Yes. I looked it up. Um, and he wants to know, how have you guys adjusted to life in Green Bay, specifically being recognized by us crazy Packer fans <laughs> in the community? Um, Packer fans are very respectful. Like, when you're out eating and, thing, and stuff like that with your family, they, they respect you. Uh, they'll come say, hey, I just wanted to say hello. Um, they won't really bother you. So um, I, I really respect that. Yeah. Honestly, I would just I would say most of the same thing, like, the respect level and the privacy that they let you have is is great. Like uh, I remember when I first got here, like I had little kids come by, like you know, sell a lemonade, stuff like that. You know, where I'm from, that's the only stuff you see in the movies. So, I mean, I appreciate that, and that's fun, and I'm just glad to be in that neighborhood. There you go. There you go. You don't hear that about Bears fans, that's for sure. Vikings fans, Lions fans. Any other fan, Ricardo? Oh, hey, that you're wrong, my friend. Take a time out. It's trivia question number two, and you yes. are asking. So I need you to do your job and check out the crowd here. We all know former Packers All Pro safety Leroy Butler is credited with inventing the Lambo leap during a '93 game against the Raiders. He scored a touchdown after the fumble he forced, and was recovered by this future legendary Pro Football Hall of Famer, who then lateraled it back to Butler to set up the new iconic touchdown score. Who you point to, Aaron? Leap. The Packers. The, the guy in the Packers? Okay. Reggie White, did you say? Reggie White it Reggie is. Reggie White it yeah. is. Yeah. The Minister of Defense. The great Reggie White. Remember that game? Another game, a memorable moment against the uh, then Los Angeles Raiders. They're all over the place, Ricardo. Oakland, L.A., Oakland, now Las Vegas here coming up. Yeah, and they'll be moving in five years probably. Yeah, they'll too. be back to Oakland yeah. in five years, just like the Chargers will move back to San Diego. But... Uh, Reggie White, uh, he tossed it back to Butler just as he was about to be pushed out of bounds. Butler was credited with a 25-yard fumble return for a score in the Packers. 28-0 victory over uh, the Raiders in minus 20 wind chills. I bet you guys are looking forward to those uh, games coming Negative. up. Negative. Huh? <laughs> yeah. Minus 20. Hey, we need Gene and we need Terry. We need also some music, Rosie, because it is time for tonight's Clubhouse Live Challenge. There's the challenge flag. Come on up. Let me get my, my little props here tonight. All right, look at this, guys. Mm, what are we going to be doing here? What are we going to be doing? Oh, we need this uh, right here. That's yours. This is yours. All right, guys. So, Gene, you're with Aaron. Terry, you're with Montrevious. And this is a game that we like to call this sucks. All right, we haven't played this game in quite some time. There are 10 yellow M&Ms mixed in with the regular colors in each of your bowls. You must use your straw to find, suck, and move each M&M into the empty bowl. You can only use one hand to guide the straw. The first one to successfully move all 10 Yellow M&Ms into the empty bowl wins the game. And I'm not done yet, guys. Hold on. I have more surprises because it is Halloween season. You can't do anything with your hands. <laughs> well, he can. No, with his hand. No, don't touch me, please. Uh, <laughs> just let me explain. They each must wear these masks while completing the task as well. It is Halloween after all. It's Halloween season. So here, well before you, if you want to put on the, well, you want to put on the mask, go ahead, Aaron. But uh, well you are playing uh, tonight. The winner gets this Brett Favre legendary book, of which I am a contributing writer. Thank you very much. The autographed photo of Aaron Jones. The USA Today Network Wisconsin ice scraper. It is getting cold. And... An MVP CD, as always, Matt <laughs> Grizzly Dan likes that stuff. Mike Thiel, Eric Lips here, our intro, outro music. The runner-up gets everything but the legendary photo or the book. So here we go. So you ask. He, he can he, he can just he, he just guide it with one one hand, the straw. The other hand, I don't care what he does with his other hand. No, he has to suck them himself. 
Well, no, you know, the bowl just stays like this. But she is very feisty very up particular. here, isn't she? She's You're gonna very get the, You know what? You're getting the penalty flag. You're ruining the game. Uh, the directions are quite clear, and she is starting to anger me, everybody. <laughs> okay, they're ready. They want to get this done. So three, two, one, go. There, look at Aaron's got the technique down. Montrevis moving fast. This is neck and neck right now. It's four to four. Oh, Montrevious. Oh, Montrevious oh. has the lead. No. Oh. Will Aaron have the comeback? Seven. It's close. Whoa. Almost there. Are we done? Montrevious. Montrevious, oh. I think finished. Oh, wait, no. You got to get him in the ball. Aaron got oh. it at the last second. Wait. <laughs> Close enough. Championship music. You're going home with the book. Congratulations. You're not done. You're going home with the signed photo. Do you need an ice scraper where you're from? <laughs> you, well, if you don't, it's up to you. And you can, uh, if you like to listen to music, that's yours as well. Mr. Gill, there you are, uh, Mr. Um, why am I losing uh, the names? Terry Walsh, Terry Walsh. You get this, you get that, you get the ice scraper, and you are good to go. How about a round of applause for our fine, fine contestants tonight? If you need, some, I, she must be from a warm weather climate. Woo! You all right there, Brett? <laughs> I need my towel here. Hold on. Mm. Getting a little worked up. You guys can take off your masks unless you want to keep them on. I'm gonna keep it on. He's you gonna keep it, it, it on. It's Halloween. It is Halloween time. <laughs> there we go. Yes. Well. Montrevis, before we get to Ricardo on our second audience question, I have some gifts for you. Like last year, I have more gifts for your man cave. Yeah. Pictures of yourself. And this, uh, you can put up the, the photo of uh, yesterday's game against the Oakland Raiders. Look at Montrevious, beautiful shot. Beautiful. There it is on the monitor. Look at you doing your thing out there on Lambeau Field wearing the classic green and gold uniform. And I always... Go back to college, and this is War Eagle. Look at Whoa, Montrevis look at that. wearing number one at Auburn. Look at that. There he is. Like a salute after you had a quarterback sack. That's for you as well. And you're, you're going home with an MVP CD because I come with gifts. Ricardo, help me out. Yes. This is a question from Montrevious, and this is from Sharon from Green Bay. Sharon. Hi, guys. Okay, I wanted to know what your favorite Packer moment is so far. Packer, favorite Packer moment? For me or Montrevious? Uh, Mon well, Montrevious can start. There we go. There's his face. Favorite Packer moment. Favorite Packer moment. There are so many of them. Uh, I'll go first. Okay, Aaron Jones. Uh, mine was my rookie, rookie year uh, game winning touchdown uh, in overtime. There we go, yes. I thought for sure you'd say the Cowboy game the other day, uh, a couple oh, weeks ago. Oh, actually, I, see, I forgot about that. <laughs> he oh. forgot about his four touchdown that game. That game, that game. That game is now that his game. favorite game. <laughs> Anything for you, Montrevious? Yeah, mine would, be, uh, mine would be the birth of my uh, first son because uh, the day I was drafted, I had my first son, so that would probably be mine. That's a day. That's a day right there. Montrevious Jr., right? And then you also have Montrevious the third. You have two young boys at home. How old are they? Two and one. Woo! Two and one. I feel sorry for you, my friend. I feel sorry. You are not getting any sleep at home, are you? Actually, it's been pretty good now because they just started daycare. So ah. <laughs> it's been a blessing. It's been a blessing for sure. Um, you want your boys to play football someday? You be okay with that? I mean, honestly, um, it doesn't really matter. I, I guess it's a part of me to like, you know, want to see them do it because I did. But at the end of the day, I just want to see them happy. You know. 
That's what life's all about, being happy. <laughs> you almost feel sorry for Ricardo because he's always unhappy. He's never happy. He's I'm extremely happy. He's always just dreary and in despair, right? Yeah, look at you, Ricardo. All right, a couple more things, and then we are done uh, with another show. It flies by, Aaron, doesn't it? Yeah. You having it a good time? Does. Are you enjoying this gig? I enjoy it. I, I love it here. Yes, yeah, see? He loves it here, and he loves seeing this place full, full of all your <laughs> Packer fans. Matt LaFleur said after the game, you can't ever get comfortable in the NFL, right? You can't. You have uh, a great win, but you can't be satisfied. So how does he keep you guys level? Um, stick to the same schedule, stick to the same thing you've been doing, and attack it the same way. Routines, right? Routines. Is that true, Montrevious? Routines is. is what it's all about? It is. We don't believe in victory Monday. Really? really? You keep working. There is no really no practice, but we go in, we work out, we watch film. Okay, so there's no days off. You're you're back in there doing your thing every Monday. Interesting. I did not know that. That's something new. Um, what do you like? Okay, maybe that's what the, the next question. What do you like most about how he goes about his business as a first year coach? Uh, he's consistent. Uh, he lets you know what he wants and what he expects, and is clear cut and to the point. What's he like when he gets mad? Right? He looks like just this <laughs> mild mannered, happy go lucky guy. Does he have a temper? Take us back in the practice field where nobody's watching. Uh, he does have a temper a little bit. No, not really. I mean, usually it takes him a little while to get mad. Uh, yeah. You know, you'll know when he's mad though. Uh, you're gonna you're gonna hear him. He's gonna be paying close attention to everything at at, at the after that. Uh, he's really big on details, so that's his thing. Yep. How about what do you like about how he calls a game? What have you noticed about that that's maybe a little bit different? Uh, the defense can't get a beat on what we're doing. Uh, they don't know if we're running out of a certain formation, passing it. Uh, we have like s 10 plays out of the same formation. So uh, that's one thing I like. You you might like the defense, they try to call out what you're doing, and they're completely wrong, and it's, it's funny. Uh, so <laughs> I'm sure <laughs> the defense like. doesn't think it's funny. Montrevious, how about uh, Mike Pettin? Let's talk about uh, your defensive coordinator a little bit. What, uh, what's he like behind the scenes? Does he get a little ornery sometimes? or uh, he, looks like he's always, he looks like he's always mad. <laughs> Got that scowl on his face, right? He, he does have a steady mad face, but, um, <laughs> I mean, he's always still calm and collect. You know, uh, he's consistent every day. He's going to be the same person every day. But that face is going to be the same every day. <laughs> a little intimidating, it, it seems like. That uh, yeah. big bald head and that scowl. It's funny, like, when he do smile, you have to capture the moment. Yeah, well, that, the, there was that great photo on uh, Packers.com with, uh, was it Montrevious and, was it Preston? Were they both with him? Uh, I forget which game. I think it was, I think it was the Darius and uh, Preston I, after one of the uh, home games. I had to go back and think, is that actually Mike Pettin? He's actually yeah. smiling. I, 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 I like, know what you're talking about, because I, I seen the picture and did the same thing. Yeah. <laughs> hey, last thing. Hey, big. It's Sunday night now. Sunday night football. You're back under the the national lights, the spotlight, uh, the keys to beating the Kansas City Chiefs. You got to keep this thing going. This will be the second of three straight games against the AFC West, so an uncommon opponent. Uh, but Arrowhead's a tough place to play. Typically, you're uh, you're in a dogfight with the Minnesota Vikings right now for first place in the NFC North. So, big game coming up. Well, how, no, how, how are you going to win? We're in first place. Oh, I'm sorry. No, I yeah. Did I miss? Did I say something wrong? Yeah. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> throw a, throw a flag on me, right? I did not. I did not mean that. Way to that. go, Aaron! Keep it shot. You are fighting. You're in a first place battle, even though you are in first place. They're chasing you. You want to keep sh ma making sure that they, they they keep the chase on, that they yes, never sir. catch you. There we go. Yes, sir. Hmm. Woo, it's getting hot up here, and I'm very thirsty. <laughs> very thirsty. Need something good after this show, Ricardo. <laughs> the keys to victory. Yes. Uh, just be ourselves. Uh, play our game. We don't have to be anybody else outside of w that. Um, rely on our brothers and um, protect the ball. It all starts with the ball on, on offense, protect it, defense, take, the, take away the ball. Yeah, because you can't assume uh, from the defensive side just because Patrick Mahomes is out that it's a piece of cake. You know Andy Reid's going to have them ready to play. He's a, like, like uh, Matt LaFleur, a very good offensive mind and a coordinator, so he's going to have things uh, ready to go. What do you see defensively in maybe the early studies so far on the, on the Chiefs? Well, I mean, honestly, to say what he said again, just to, the, the main thing is to try to be us. But, I mean, uh, everybody knows they got a lot of weapons on offense. That's probably the main thing, the first thing that stand out. Um, I'm sure it will be a little different, you know, with the quarterback change. Everything can always change off of vibes. You know, there's just things that come with the game. But um, we're looking forward to the test, and uh, 
We'll see you Sunday. You're looking forward to the test, but you're not looking forward to the plane ride. We found that out uh, <laughs> tonight. Hey, how about Aaron Jones, Montrevious Adams tonight? I think we have time, Ricardo, for trivia question number three. Uh, we got a little bit of a late start, so I'll ask it. Two teams remain unbeaten in the NFL. Who are they? Two teams. Two teams. Raise your hand. Don't shout it out. What do you got? Uh, what do you got? Right here? Not in your jersey? Yeah. What we 49ers Yes, she gets the pizza and beer. The 49ers and the Patriots. The Patriots play tonight against the Jets, actually. It started right now. Uh, meanwhile, the Packers will take on, whoops, on the nine, uh, take on the Niners on November 24th. That follows the Packers by week. <laughs> Ricardo, it's time to go up north. This is where we pick who's going to win the big game. That's As I right. said, it's Packers, it's Chiefs, it's Sunday Night Football, it's Al Michaels, it's Chris yeah. Collinsworth. Yeah. Ricardo, who's winning the big game? Now, I picked the Packers to beat the Raiders this past week, but I'm going with the Chiefs this week. Whoa! That's right. Boo. Boomy. Boo. Boomy. Boo. Matt Moore, Boo. don't Matt. Yeah. Thank you, Montrevious. Montrevious. Matt Moore, Matt Moore. Serviceable backup. They got Somebody great cut his mic, please. <laughs> <laughs> Aaron wants your mic cut. No. Montrevious is going to split you in Chiefs half won. after the Chiefs show. Win. <laughs> You're not going to make it out of here alive. Hey, Aaron, remember you remember this little thing, right? We call this the victory, victory visor. Yes, it is undefeated, and it will remain undefeated because it is back on my head. The only time was when we had to cancel that show, and that's the only time we've lost. Every time I put the victory visor on. You've won the game. Me and Gene, Sorry. how does it look on the... He loves it. Let's go 34-24, Green Bay over the Chiefs. No Patrick Mahomes. I think that does spell trouble for the Chiefs, who will turn to 35-year-old Matt Moore to keep things humming while the NFL's reigning MVP recovers. I think Mike Pettin will dial up some confusing stuff for the Chiefs' backup quarterback for some turnovers. Maybe Montrevious Adams gets in for a sack. How about that? <laughs> I like Aaron Rodgers and company to have success attacking a Chiefs defense that ranks near the bottom of the league. I think he is start. I think he's. I think he's gonna. This is the start of a really hot stretch from number twelve. We've seen that uh, numerous times throughout to his career. Uh, defense remains opportunistic. The offense continues to build and evolve. Aaron Jones has two touchdowns Sunday night to keep that uh, thing going. One rushing, one through the air, and the Packers come up with a big victory at Arrowhead. By the way, the Chiefs, Ricardo, just one and two at home. That's shocking, actually. You like it, Mean Gene? Packers win again, seven and one. <laughs> Ricardo, Packers News app. Yes, with exclusive commentary, insider analysis, and award-winning photos and videos from USA Today Network, Wisconsin's Packers coverage team. The Packers News app is your one-stop shop for complete coverage of the Green Bay Packers. This app is available for iPhone and Android users only, Brett. No Motorola. Yeah, special thank you to our sponsors, Superior Discount Liquors. Check them out in Green Bay, Manitowoc, and Sheboygan, or find them online at superiordiscountliquors.com. Don't forget about Pottawatomie Hotel and Casino. Again, play Wednesday Night Wins with your club card now through November 13th. Find out more at paysbig.com slash fallwins. Mayfield Sports Marketing, a leading Wisconsin sports marketing agency and speaker bureau. Escort Limousine Service, the preferred limousine service of the Green Bay Packers, and of course our friends right here, Red Line Hotel, Paper Valley. I want to give an, another plug, uh, Lambo Leap, Ultimate Leap Plug. Has anyone here, Mean Gene, I know you have, thought about actually doing a Lambo Leap? Yeah, okay. <laughs> that would be like Mason Crosby's Lambo Lift. That would be for you, too. Well, the Ultimate Leap 2019 contest is now open. You can enter to win awesome Packers prizes and the ultimate game day experience by getting to do the leap during the Packers game on December 8th. Win your chance to celebrate like one of the Packers. Enter today at theultimateleap.com. We also have, again, informa information on your tables. What a show. What a show. What a show, Aaron Jones. <laughs> and you have the final word. Uh, I'd like to thank you, Montrevious, for coming on the show. I'd like to thank all of you guys for coming out. I love all the 33 jerseys and the, uh, the brand. Um, look to continue to keep it going. Look forward to seeing you guys next week after 7-1. and one. Go Pack Go. There he goes. He's confident. For Montrevious, for Showtime, for Ricardo, for Jen, and the rest of the Clubhouse Live crew, I'm Brett Christofferson saying so long. Be back here next Monday. It's our Halloween show. Don't forget about your costume. Everybody wear costumes for prizes. And uh, we will celebrate also another big Packers victory. Right, Mean Gene with this guy, Green Bay Packers running back, Aaron Showtime Jones. Mean Gene, it's your turn. Take it away.
we have some giveaways, so stick around. We have some giveaways. 